It happened within the course of about an hour or so across two different seats of government, uh, first in the city of Nashville and then in the state capitol. Uh, but this is what it looked like. This was late today when Tennessee legislator Justin Jones, who was recently expelled from the state legislature by Republicans, uh, this is what it looked like today over the course of about an hour when he retook his seat. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to nominate Representative Justin Jones. Right. Votes are in. Mr. Clerk, close the machines. Take the vote. Ayes 36, no zero, no abstention. By the Constitution. By the Constitution. Of this state. Of this state. So helpful. So helpful. Yeah! No expulsion, no attempt to silence us will stop us, but it will only galvanize and strengthen our movement. And we continue to show up in the people's house. Power to the people! Just last week, Republicans in the Tennessee legislature voted to expel two young men of color, two Democratic members of that body, for participating in a protest against gun violence at the Capitol. They committed the grave crime of being loud with other protesters. Among other things, that action by Tennessee Republicans, the extreme action to expel them as legislators, well, it meant technically that local government in both of those two men's districts would have to appoint somebody to fill those now empty seats in the interim until there can be a special election. Well, fine then. Today at about 5.30 Eastern time, the Nashville Metro Council appointed Justin Jones to be his own replacement in the legislature. They voted to send him back to the seat from which he was just expelled. The vote, you heard it there, was 36 yes, zero no. Less than an hour later, by 6.15 p.m. Eastern, Justin Jones had been sworn in again as a member of the Tennessee state legislature in front of tons of people who had showed up to the Capitol to cheer him on. By 6.30 p.m., by just 15 minutes later, he had marched arm in arm with those supporters to the doors of the legislature to, in fact, retake his seat now a duly appointed member of the Tennessee state legislature. I should tell you, we expect the county government in Memphis, in Shelby County, uh, to take a similar vote on reinstalling the other ousted member, Justin Pearson, two days from now, this Wednesday. Joining us now, live from Tennessee, um, is the newly reinstated Tennessee state representative, Justin Jones. Representative Jones, congratulations, sir, and thank you for being here tonight. Thank you so much, Rachel. I have to imagine that um, with everything that you have been through over these past few days, this has to have been a very emotional afternoon and evening. I, I do just, if you forgive me, I just sort of want to ask you how you are feeling and how it felt to be back in that chamber. Well, um, it has definitely been an emotional past few days, but I am I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm exhausted, but I'm hopeful um, that we are seeing a resurrection of, of, of reconstruction here in the South, that the decision that was made on Thursday, this, this immoral decision, this unconstitutional decision, um, was not the final decision, that the people of my county government and thus of, 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 of my district spoke. And I'm, I'm honored to be representing them because my concern was that um, District 52, over 78,000 people did not, would not have a voice. And so I was, I was honored to walk into that chamber today and be able to, to cast a vote for my district and for the people um, who sent me there to be their voice. Um, Representative Jones, you spoke with my colleague Simone Sanders over the weekend. I heard that interview, and it was interesting to hear you talk with her about concerns that, despite the fact that your local county government was effectively reinstalling you, making you your own interim successor, there were worries that um, attorneys from the Speaker were threatening that you might not be reseated until next session. There have been worries expressed that uh, the Republicans in the legislature would seek to expel you again and throw you out again on the same grounds as before. Are those concerns gone now? Is, are all those matters settled, as far as you can tell? 
Yeah, well, you know, that still yet, is yet to be determined. I'm grateful that my attorney, um, one of um, whom includes the team, includes uh, former U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder, sent a letter at 10 a.m. Um, Central to the House Speaker informing them that they do not, um, you know, want to see any obstruction of me, you know, representing the people of District 52, sent a letter to put them on notice that, you know, we, we would respond if that was the case. And I think that had a big impact on the Speaker, as well as the thousands of people who gathered here today, uh, multiracial, intergenerational, um, gathered from the Metro Courthouse to the legislature um, to let them know that the world is watching and that we're not going to allow their attacks on democracy to happen in the comfort of silence and that we're still calling for action on common sense gun laws. That's, the, that's what this was all about in the beginning. And so the speaker's threats against our democracy are being met with this resurrection of a movement for, for multiracial democracy that is really happening here in Nashville and that I think is going to have um, you know, reverberations across the South. After you were sworn in again today, um, I know that you called for the speaker, uh, Speaker Sexton, to resign effectively for having orchestrated this and also uh, for his lack of action or re indeed regressive action when it comes to, to gun violence. I have to ask you, is that something that uh, you're going to continue to push for? Do you have do you have any sense that the speaker may actually regret the decision to expel you and your colleague, given the, the response that it's had in recent days and including, as you say, those those thousands of people in a multiracial, multigenerational display today out today to support you? Definitely. I mean, this House Speaker, um, there's a different energy in the Capitol today. And I actually was on the elevator with the member who filed the expulsion papers against me, Representative Bud Holsey. And I asked him, you know, did you learn anything from this experience? And he was silent. I think this, this is a time of reflection for the Republican leadership, that they were so drunk and arrogant with power that, that they are being humbled to say that their attacks um, may have been successful in the past, but this is a new day, a new time in Tennessee, and there's a new movement rising up, that the South will rise anew. And so the House Speaker, I definitely will, uh, will join with the, the coalition of people across the state calling for his resignation because he is the greatest enemy toward democracy. But, but what more importantly, what we're calling for is the restoration of democracy in the people's house. We don't need a speaker who shuts off microphones, who cuts off members from speaking, who won't even let, it, let us vote if we go join you know, those protesting who will cut off our voting machines, kick you off committee. We have a, a speaker who does not, who represents the opposite of democracy, which is autocracy. And, and he has not fit to serve in that role. And so I join with the members of the community calling for his resignation. Tennessee State Representative Justin Jones, newly reinstalled in his seat tonight by vote of his county council, who has appointed him his own successor, uh, which to me has a little poetry in it uh, that seems resonant, um, given uh, your eloquence, sir, as a representative for your constituents and an advocate for the causes that are closest to you. Tennessee State Representative Justin Jones, good luck to you. Thanks for your time tonight, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel.